Hi, I'm Brad. At this current moment. This channel has been all about the future or the near future of virtual reality hardware. I guess that's going to be called mixed reality very soon, the way things are going, which is fine. But I decided I wanted to go back into some sort of retro gaming VR sort of hardware stuff. I got my hands on something that I was pretty proud of nabbing uh, for a pretty cheap price on eBay. I still cannot believe it. it it's here. But you know that technology I always talk about on this channel? OLED micro displays, also known as OLED on silicon, also known as micro OLED. Yeah, I got one of the first consumer headsets that included that inside the actual casing. I know you're thinking, you're probably like, oh, it's probably like the R Para, right? That kind of shipped to some people and kind of ghosted a bunch of other people. No, I have something much older than that. Something from all the way back in 2005. Yes, there were VR headsets releasing in 2005, and there were VR headsets releasing with micro OLED displays in 2005, if you can believe it. Well, you're about to. In this box, I have the past of the future, the Imagine Z800 that says, get inside the game. Now, I'm gonna do a little quick unboxing and overview of this hardware and see if I can get it working. But the really funny thing about this is, VR was still like very Wild West. In fact, I don't even think it was Wild West. It was probably somewhere in the ocean back in 2005. No companies dared to enter VR or do anything related to head mounted displays for the consumer market, except for a very select few. And this Imagine company, which I actually interviewed last year, they're still around. They still make high end OLED micro displays for whatever markets they want to do, mostly military. Um, they're trying to dabble with consumer partnerships, but Anyway, that's not important. They dared to show this off at E3 2005 and they got some rewards for it. And the best part I want to show first is just this short clip of the actual advertising that they would do for this headset to give you an idea of kind of what they were going for, what they were hoping people would buy it for. So for people who always wanted a Counter-Strike in VR, well, it kind of existed in the most non-direct way ever. I don't know anyone who actually played it. I couldn't find any YouTube videos of people actually recording their footage because again, that was even before streaming and YouTube was very common back then. But apparently there were some forums where people actually used this thing to do first person shooters, despite the fact there was no Steam VR, there was no Oculus SDK, there was very little support for this hardware. In fact, I even heard from people who developed for this hardware saying it was a disaster trying to develop for it because there was just nothing available. It was just relying on NVIDIA's 3D vision technology and that's it. Not only was the software really difficult to develop for this thing and there wasn't really much to do or play for normal consumers, it was, as you can probably imagine, pretty expensive at the time. It was about $900 on its first launch date back in 2005, but if you adjust that for inflation today, that's around $1,400 USD. Now, they eventually did lower the price shortly after to $550 USD, which is around $900 USD, which is way more palatable, sort of like the 2016 uh, HTC Vive and Oculus Rift was around that price range on the higher end. So, even though that they lowered the price and everything, it didn't really exceed expectations, it didn't sell a ton of units, but it was all people had. And even the people who wanted to dive into it had somewhat of a good experience for the time. Now let's just stop talking about it. Let's go ahead and open this thing and show off all the features, all the actual uh, design of the thing. And we can kind of judge whether VR has progressed, how it's uh, maybe taken some ideas from this headset and all that fun stuff. Now, as I said before, let's get inside the game. Now, again, this is a pretty new, well-conditioned unit. I'm, I'm, I'm again, I don't know how it was in such good condition, but it included the actual carrying case. Everything you see here was actually what it came with when the device launched. You can see it has a, like, a nice carrying bag and they still haven't changed any of their logos or anything like that. So that's interesting. And we have an old device that I don't think I've seen in a few years. Still has the August 23rd, 2005 drivers, and I don't even have a disk drive to install these in. 
And I'm pretty sure that I will not be able to get a lot of the 3D and VR stuff working because NVIDIA actually uh, deprecated their 3D Vision software in more recent drivers. We also have a limited warranty. Um, yeah, I have a feeling this is also probably doesn't really work anymore, but cool. And also the actual quick start guide. Now, if you flip through the quick start guide, you can kind of get a hint of what the actual resolution per eye for this headset was. And it is 800 by 600 per eye micro OLED displays with around a refresh rate of up to 60 hertz. And the actual FOV is pretty laughably low. It is 40 degrees diagonal, which sounds pretty bad to today's standards. But again, this was beyond Wild West. And this is more of like an idea of uh, having a floating desktop or a floating uh, movie theater in your sort of view and with gaming on the outside of that as well. Now, if we open this up, we can see everything that's all packed neatly and nicely inside the actual carrying case, which I guess the idea is you would bring this around places. Um, yeah, I don't know what you would plug this into to make it mobile. This would require some really high end PCs even back in 2000 and five or 2006 at least even so yeah uh, portability is kind of a laughable matter but we can get some really quick views of the actual hmd now the first thing i do want to point out is the uh probably strange to see optics on these things again they're not very wide fov in fact they're only 40 degrees and that's in the diagonal the, the largest fov but it does have some pretty cool things going on um these are magnifying 0.6 inch diagonal displays. So even smaller than what the displays in the big screen beyond had. So it makes quite a lot of sense why these things just don't have that large of FOV. Um, the magnification, these prism optics are probably not that large. But the one cool thing about these prism optics is they're a little bit more complicated than Fresnel because they are actually bouncing light around inside the actual optic itself. So kind of more similar to pancake lenses than actual Fresnel lenses. Now, surprisingly, this actually does have an IPD adjustment. As you can see here, it's per eye, which is pretty bizarre. You don't really see one per eye IPD adjustment these days, but it's got it. it, it it's got that. It also has built in audio, which is crazy. Not even the original HTC Vive had built in audio, but they have these little simple earbuds that pop out, go into your ear, and then you can snap them back in when you put them back into storage or put them away safely so the dog don't chew up the wire as easily. This thing weighs about 280 grams ish. And despite it weighing way less than a lot of headsets today with a lot less components, they still opted for the top strap, which is the same thing that I did for my beyond. Um, so people had said that this does not work. Well, you should have told this company <laughs> that did the same thing that felt it was also required to make this thing comfortable, despite it literally being somewhat similar to a visor hat. Now, I will put the headset on in a moment to kind of show off the fit and really how you're supposed to wear it and use it. But I do want to show off the actual link box real quickly. Um, I mean, link boxes, again, every headset back in the day also use link boxes. In fact, some headsets today still use link boxes. It's very simple to have one cable out, go to the HMD, and they split it off into audio, video, and whatever else is needed, USB. Um, and this does have both mic and uh, headphone audio jacks inside. It uses, depending on whether you're using 3D vision mode or just single version mode, um, it does have two VGA cables, which I needed to order some dongles to make this even possibly work on my PC, even though I'm, again, not sure if it will. All right, so the way you're supposed to put it on is you're supposed to loosen the back and obviously the top strap if needed. I already kind of loosened it before I recorded. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, slide it on here. And that's pretty much it. I think I actually do need to adjust the top strap a bit to make it lower on my head. That's more the way I want it. And here's the coolest part of the HMD, in my personal opinion, is it is a flip up design, which makes a lot of sense for an HMD like this. Again, it's not exactly immersive VR. It's kind of very low FOV. So when you want to have flip it down to sign up, see your desktop or see a movie you're watching back in the day, um, you have that. And then when you want to not do that or you want to talk to someone, you flip it up. 
There's not been too many flip up headsets, but I always love talking to developers. Uh, developers love flip up headsets. They just, again, not very good for using large displays or Fresnel lenses because they're just usually so bulky and what you're flipping up and the hinges have to be uh, larger and it's just not as comfortable. But for something as small as this, I mean, I would love to see something like the big screen beyond figure out a way to have a flip up design like this. It's, it's really, really kind of nice. Now, of course, I would also pop out these earbuds, as I was talking about earlier, and just find my ears under this mess of hair and pop them in. And I don't know, I, I kind of I'm, I'm looking at myself in the camera right now. I just I just kind of feel like I'm a hacker or something like I'm I need it. I need to get my keyboard. That's why I'm in the system. But there's not much else to say about the headset itself, at least for the comfort. I mean, it's obviously very light. All the, all the pressure is on your forehead a little bit, um, which they do not have a very good pad for it. It's just a very simple, it's not even like a, like a soft leather. It's just like, like a felt, kind of like a Velcro pad that's rubbing against your head. So that's not ideal. I realize you can also pop this off for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe they were planning to sell other materials at some point. I, I don't know what that is. Now I'm gonna see if I can actually get this working with my PC and see what the actual image looks like. Um, God, I really hope this works. Uh, sorry, you're gonna have to see this rat's mess. It's pretty funny because I realized this cable says high speed USB 2.0. Yeah, uh, no. Okay, things are blinking on the link box. I don't know what that means. Oh, okay, it's blinking green. So I just got it plugged in. And it's working like as an actual external monitor. It's it still works. I. I... Wow. Um, however, if I'm going to give the image quality sort of a judgment, <laughs> Are we really doing a full on review for this thing? Well, there's obviously a, a bit of a sweet spot or I should say an eye box is very short. You have to make sure it's perfectly center. Otherwise, things will just not look right. Um, but when you are in that perfectly center zone. This looks really good. <laughs> like I'm actually I'm actually kind of shocked. Now, I will say. This being early OLED, um, even OL early OLED on silicon, I do notice things such as Mura, um, which I don't notice on any more recent micro OLED, uh, for example. And the colors look a little bit washed out. But again, like even though it's like a 40 degrees diagonal, I can definitely imagine people back in the day putting this thing on and watching let me, let me put up, let me actually put up a video uh, on this thing and see how it looks and I'll put the camera up to it. Oh no, an instruction manual to ruin all the fun. Now I also put some text up to see if it's readable and it most definitely is, even though there's probably some glare that is kind of introduced from the reflections being created within the prism, similar to pancake lenses, but it's pretty good. The screen door effect is effectively not there again for that small FOV, so it's easier to do that. But overall, this thing kind of is amazing for the day it came out. Obviously, as I said before, color coding is not the best back then, but Everyone had around an 800 by 600 monitor at that time. And the idea just to put one on your face that looked probably better in some ways than the monitors at the time as well is pretty incredible, I think. So, yeah, um, really cool. I hope we see a lot more advances that make headsets look better like this, but bigger FOVs and everything else that's happening in this industry. And I think there will be very soon. Everyone's going the micro OLED and this headset, even back then, shows why. Now I want to give a special shout out to all my mega Patreon subs who donate $25 plus a month to me so I can continue doing content in the most 
relaxed and beautiful way I can, not being paid, not having to worry about sponsorships. It helps me a lot and helps the content become better because who knows what a sponsorship or affiliate link could do to someone's subconscious. I also have some pretty cool videos lined up very soon. I'll be going in an event in a couple of weeks where actually, hopefully I'll be able to see these guys again and do a follow-up interview. They made some big strides in their technology and I wanna talk more to them about the future of what they think about OLED micro displays. But there also be way other companies showing off their future display designs for VR, AR, XR, blah, 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 blah. And it's always super fun time to talk with these engineers and smart people that are building the industry we really care about. Yeah. But that's it for now. Have a wonderful week, weekend, day, night. I mean, some people could be watching this a year from now. Valentine's Day, I don't know. Go kiss your hubby. Bye.